Hello everyone. In this lesson I want us to do the Lewis diagram of H and S. And so if we look at H we can see that the what's in group 1 whereas S is in group 6. So H has one electron, S has six. And so we're going to need two hydrogens because if this links up there then another hydrogen would link up over there. And so we end up with a structure that looks like this. So to work out the name, I don't mean hydrogen sulfide. You know in the previous lesson I showed you the different type of VSEPR names. So we need to look at the number of groups around the central atom first, which there are one, two, three, four groups. So four groups. Then we need to look at the number of lone pairs also around the central atom. So there's a lone pair. Why? Because there's no bond over here. And then there's a lone pair. Why? Because there's no bond over here. So we've got four groups with two lone pairs. Now if you watched the previous lesson and you know that table, you'll know that a 4-2 combination is going to be called bent or angular. Next, I want us to have a look at H and Cl, so hydrogen and chlorine. So hydrogen we know has one, chlorine has seven. And so these link up perfectly like that. And so we end up with something like that. Now we don't really have a central atom, but guys, think about it. The only way, the only type of shape that those two could ever be is going to be called linear, meaning it's on a straight line, because even if the H bonded down there, this is still going to be a straight line. So when you have something like this happening, where you only have two types of atoms, or two atoms, then it's going to be called linear. There is another type of linear, and that's when we looked at something like CO2 in the previous lesson, which is when we had two surrounding groups like that. So that's one group, and that's another group. That was also called linear. Next we can do P, which is phosphorus, and hydrogen. Now phosphorus is over here in group 5. So that's got 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 electrons, whereas hydrogen only has 1. So we're going to need 3 hydrogens. So that this one could link there, for example, this one over there, and that one over there. And so here we have, surrounding the central atom, we've got 1, 2, three, four groups. Do we have any lone pairs? Yes, we have one. Why? Because there's nothing over here. So we have four groups with one lone pair. So if you have four groups with one lone pair, if you looked at the previous lesson, we call that trigonal pyramidal. Not trigonal bipyramidal, that's something different, just trigonal pyramidal. Next we can have a look at CH3Cl, and so we have looked at this in a previous lesson quite a while back, but if we look at carbon it's got four electrons, hydrogen has one, and there's three of them, so we can just do that, and then Cl has seven, because it's in group seven. Now it's quite easy to see what happens, is that this one would go bond over there maybe, this one would go there, this one there, and then this one over there. And so for the shape, or the name, sorry, we could have a look at the number of electrons around the central atom, or well, not the number of electrons, but the number of pairs, and so there's four groups. Are there any lone pairs? Oh, I forgot CL's remaining electrons, whoops. Are there any lone pairs? Now some students say yes because of these, but guys, the lone pairs have to be around the central atom. And so if we look around the central atom, there are no lone pairs. So that's zero lone pairs. And so when we have a four group with zero lone pairs, then that one's name will be tetrahedral. And so now I quickly want to talk about the angles for these molecules. The first one I'm going to start with is something like this. So when we have two groups around the central atom, we said that that's linear. And so this angle between each carbon and oxygen is going to be 180 degrees because it's a straight line. When you have a structure like this that has three groups with no lone pairs, so three groups with no lone pairs, 
Oh, around each of these fluorines, I'm not sure if I added that in the previous lesson. There should have been those electrons, but those are not those aren't going to be counted as part of the lone pairs because we're looking around the central atom. And so guys, imagine this. Imagine you've got something that has three groups around it and they position themselves perfectly. Well, this angle would have to be 120 degrees so that you create a 360 degree angle work a revolution in total. So when you have a three group with no lone pairs, then the angle between each bond is 120 degrees. Now this one here, don't be tempted to say 90 degrees because this type of shape is not in two dimensions. It's a three dimensional shape, okay? But you just need to remember this. Whenever you've got four groups, so we can see that there are four groups over here, and there are no lone pairs, then the angle between each bond, so for example, from the H to the C to the H, the, that bond there is 109.5 degrees. If you have four bonds or four groups, but one of them is a lone pair, then it causes this angle over here to become a little bit smaller than 109.5, and it becomes exactly 2.5 degrees smaller. So 109.5 minus 2 degrees, or minus 2.5 degrees, is 107. Then in the next one, if we have four groups, but now we have two lone pairs, then you minus another 2.5. And so we end up with 107 minus 2.5, which is 104.5 degrees. Why does that angle become smaller? Okay, well, that's a good question. So if we, for example, take NH3, this angle is normally 109.5 if there was something else over here, if it was a four group with no lone pairs. But this lone pair over here does something. So what it does, lone pairs are very, very negative. Okay, very negative. So what they do is they push these bonding pairs, they push on them, they push them away. And lone pairs, which are these ones, are much stronger than bonding pairs. And so what actually happens is it causes these H's over here to be pushed further away. So your structure will actually look like this. And so we can see that this angle over here has been made smaller because it used to be over there. And so it's become smaller. It's become exactly 2.5 degrees smaller than what it normally would have been. Now, if we look at something like water, if there were H's over here, then it would be a four group with no lone pairs. So then the angle is 109.5. But now you've got this lone pair pushing on this one very hard, and you've got this one pushing over here very hard. And so it causes these two H's to move very close to each other. And so this angle over here becomes a lot smaller than what it was. Originally it was something more like this. And so it becomes 2.5 less than this one over here, which is 107. And so we end up with 104.5 degrees.